to share a cup of wine around a table was more than simply an exercise in proximity. It was a statement of relationship in a society that drew boundaries around appropriate table company. Wine shared with those who Jesus knew would cower and betray him became a statement of forgiveness, of grace given already. The one who ate my bread has lifted his hill against me. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him and asked Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus... He asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, Judas immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. I was just so angry. Why wouldn't he fight? I mean, he had so many followers at this time and so many of them were in Jerusalem right now. Why did he insist on this blessed are the meek stuff? I think all along I had hoped that this was the revolution, that we were finally going to stand up against the Roman occupiers. And I think, I just got so bitter. I mean, he had so much power and charisma. Couldn't he have just done anything, this son of God? I kept it inside for some time. And it started to boil in rage until I just snapped. If I couldn't have my revolution, then I could get out. I was tired of holding a purse for this motley group of people who gave it away as soon as it came in. And then I discovered I could get out with some money from those dirty Romans. And it happened so fast. They approached me. They watched me. Perhaps they read my indecision, my rage, my separation at times from the group, and it just happened. And then I was sitting at the table, his table, knowing what I had put into motion. All of a sudden, I was flooded with panic as we sat, all sat there with the air heavy with fear and unknowing. And it reminded me of all the meals in our years together. You know, sometimes it was just us, this small band of disciples. But often it was with someone we couldn't believe yet then he was hanging out. I mean, it was hard to understand sometimes. People who took advantage of others. Those who were against us. Those who questioned him. People who were beneath him, really, he invited to the table.
He was doing it again. Only this time it was me. He was willing to share the cup and break the bread with despicable me. It doesn't matter who we are or what we've done, he always invites us. Mercy really was his true nature. And I found out that love really is the biggest weapon of change. He would never hurt anyone. He loved us all. Even the lowest of the low. If Judas's resentment and hatred remain incomprehensible, Jesus' love to the very end is still more beyond all understanding. The Gospels are so discreet concerning Judas' motives because they do not want to satisfy our curiosity, but rather to lead us to faith. They do not clarify the abyss of darkness of the drama of Judas. They reveal the unfathomable and incomprehensible depth of God's love. Come ye sinners, poor and needy, weak and wounded, sick and sore. Jesus ready stands to save you, full of pity, love, and power. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me with his arms. In the arms of my dear Savior, oh, there are ten thousand charms. (laughs) 